All right, so the work begins with everything we know. This is an intensely graphic slide, an intensely graphic presentation, each one of which is a brush stroke on a picture I want to paint for you of an emerging science. All right, so these things are pretty undeniable. It's been going on for 10,000 years. We have sacred places like Machu Picchu, the vortexes of Sedona. We have temples and shrines that feel different. They were located for some reason in certain places because those places felt different. Today, you know that when you walk into a church, it feels different from a casino. During the campaigns, I noticed very often this Obama effect. Everybody commented that crowds were different for Obama everywhere. Does he have an ability to somehow channel certain energy? How do you account for charisma and things like that? Everybody has their lucky charms. Uh, things hanging around their neck, crosses, crystal statues, Coke bottles in Mexican churches. It doesn't matter. Anything can be infused with value. Food is a big topic today, as are computers. And this is all handled very thoroughly in uh, Lyle Watson's book here. Uh, Lyle's done a couple of great, uh, six great books. And uh, he talks about this and actually ends up addressing computers. Now, with regards to inanimate objects, I'd like to just quote because I found this. In view of the energetic tendency for matter to self-organize, no physical threshold does in fact exist between animate and inanimate. That's Buckminster Fuller. Here's some of the stuff that I've done, you all know about, that we have these, basically these two tracks of technology on one hand and then politics on the other, sort of going to philosophy and then ending up in entrepreneurship. For the recording, I should mention that this material is all copyright and uh, some of the techniques to be described as pa are patent pending. Let's start talking about entanglement. I use this as an introduction because it's a little bit easier for people to get as an entry point. The Pear Project has been criticized and canceled. Anytime you see something like that, you know it's from Nature Journal. Let's start talking about entanglement. What is a significant event? What can you look at to kind of line things up? When you have people all around the world, there are a lot of significant events. Okay, well, let's see. It's controversial, but let's just see some of the results. This is a report from 2000 by Dr. Tiller, who we'll discuss in more detail later, saying that the random number generators in the PCs and the Macintosh has drifted as we cross the millennium in opposite directions, which is very strange. There's no way to really account for that technically. Here's another look at the data. This is GCP data. Now, the GCP system are random number generators, nine of them at the time, I believe, that were connected up at research centers, and they look statistically at the results of them and, and, and try to correlate uh, what's going on. And so you see at the millennium, you see this, this notch here. Here's a view of 911. This is the first analysis of the data. This is the standard flow, and you see this sharp thing here. But here's a second. They went back and did a second look. What's really astonishing is that besides the indication of the event is this indication of presentiment. It starts happening before the planes hit the towers. This starts to get very extraordinary. Now let's look at the atmosphere. These are two geostationary magnetic satellites on opposite sides of the Earth. The actual positions are given here. You can see they're sort of going along doing their things until the planes hit. Everything goes crazy. And then both lines are absolutely chaotic compared to the prior. How can that happen? How can that happen except between a tight coupling between human... I'll tell you what, what the theory is. The heart generates 5,000 times the magnetism of the brain. So the theory is that when you have 6 billion people undergoing stress, it couples to the magnetosphere, which weakens the ionosphere which creates global warming. And that's why, and that's what they're working on, that's what this can be important. This just came out, very fun. That's what they were expecting. My friend Jonathan Goldman was very into this. They started meditating at this point. Again, you get the pre-sentiment. Then they started meditating, it climbs. Then they started singing, and it really takes off, and then I guess they ran out of breath here about four hours later. This is 61 units they now have deployed around the world. So, oh, but on that slide, you saw those tracks, you'll, uh, so sensors on the um, heart mass slide, they're going to be deploying those around the world. Okay, so there's some evidence of coupling going on. Now we're going to look at a tighter connection of possible entanglement. Now, the reason I know so much about electromagnetics is because I've been so thoroughly saturated with it. This is my ham radio shack. Uh, circa 1972. That's a 3500 watt amplifier. Those are mercury vapor rectifiers that emit x-rays. 
uh, hand-built oscilloscope. That's the compact version. The earlier version was a 7,000 watt version in the garage, which used to light up the fluorescent lights. Absolute insanity. Robert Becker has tried to call a stop to this stuff since 1990. This is still the reference. It needs to be updated, but he's been Nobel nominated twice for it. There's no question that cell phones are dangerous to it. I can go into why. Keep them away from your heads and your kids. And if you look at the paper with your cell phone, it says, if you're concerned, uh, don't use it. <laughs> cell, cell radios have turned every one of us into a microwave ham radio operator. We hold these things to our heads, and it, it fries us. I'm sorry, it does. OK, at the time, so I became very concerned. In the late 80s, we started spending all this time in front of CRTs. You remember those? So I started becoming really concerned about EMF exposure. The two most credible products were this passive pendant and this active device. The active device introduced the concept of an active protective shield around you, and that's the box which Tiller seized upon to do the experiments that we'll talk about in a minute. As I say, I was interested in uh, distributing Claris, but I was unconvinced by their science. I didn't have a personal sense of effects, so I gave my stuff away. The problem is, I gave it to a woman who's very sensitive electromagnetically. She couldn't leave the house, she couldn't go to Walmart, this kind of stuff. So I gave her the pendant, all of a sudden she could leave the house. And I gave her the ally, all of a sudden she can't go anywhere without it. And she's been an encouragement, we get stories like this all the time. We've created a hundred of these units, nobody's ever given one back. 